got the whole damn verse spinning around you with open arms. It's a race against time that plunges you deep into the black. What are you gonna do when the void stares back? You'll never stop the revolution. Time to begin your evolution. Take a leap of faith. Gotta break, break the illusion. You gotta make your own solution. Take a leap of faith. The future's just a void, jump away. Greetings, humanity, and uh, all, uh, uh, and, and anyone else who may happen to be watching. Uh, welcome to Channel Other Doc. I'm Jim, I use he, him pronouns, and this is our Dark Matter game, uh, Ghosts of Salt Maw. Um, I am playing Cole Hayden, human gunslinger. Um, and uh, if this feels as though it's, uh, <laughs> if this feels as though our, our timing is uh, is a bit strange today. Just imagine that it's an hour earlier, because I'm sure a lot of people are doing that today anyway, uh, as as the rest of the world, as the rest of this continent imagines that it's an hour later. But I digress. Anyway, uh, let's go around and say hi to everyone. Find out who they are and who they're playing, and we shall start once again with Anino. Hello. No. No. I'm not starting here right now. Dang it, okay. <laughs> I'll pass, thank you. Hands, hands no, up, who uh, wants to go first? <laughs> Hi, my name's Anino, I use he, him pronouns, and um, I play the um, super optimistic and uh, super uh, people person known as uh, Rec Mara. Also who? uses he, him pronouns. Awesome! Awesome! Excellent! It's it's going to be one of those. Uh, this one's going to be one of those episodes, folks. Just so you're aware, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of bouncing around in chaos today, as, uh, as there, there was a lot of bouncing around in chaos in getting everything together today. Uh, chaos, glorious chaos. But uh, let us move on uh, to Kazimi. Hello. Hi, I'm Kazimi. I use she/her pronouns. I am playing. Uh, Clangswell, Nunu, Fritz, Thunderstruck, hold, uh, somebody, 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 Fritz, uh, the space gnome, they, them, pronoun, uh, next. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hi, May, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. I'm May. I use she, her pronouns. I also play Lastness Chain Tower, who also uses she, her pronouns. I am a very natural reader. I knew I was going to forget my place if I didn't read it today. I'm just imagining that uh, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and, and, uh, uh, and, and it'll be Sunday again. <laughs> this will all be a dream. <laughs> That's what I'm currently imagining. Um, One glorious fever dream. I know, right? Mem will be uh, will be rejoining us shortly, um, and uh, so shall uh, shall shall, uh, shall shall perform self introduction when that happens. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to I very wisely I think hand things over to our illustrious station master, Alyssa. Hello. Hi, my name is Alyssa. She, her pronouns, and I play everyone else. So, with most games on this channel, we'll be using safety tools such as the X card, the N card, and the O card. So at any point we stumble into territory that crosses a line for somebody, they can type an X into the chat, make an X symbol. We stop, rewind, add a dash of retcon, and it never happened. Sort of like this whole morning. <laughs> 
if we're kind of towing that line and it's okay to have the subject in the game, but you don't want a graphic description, that's where the end comes into play. We pound to the fake fireplace, fade to black and move on. And if you're just getting really into the role play and you're okay to keep on pouring on the drama, that's where the O comes in. And if you just want to check in and make sure you haven't gone too far, you can type an O with a question mark and we'll all respond as needed. Previously on Ghosts of Saltma, having witnessed the infinite tomorrow rise from its watery grave, powered by some restless otherworldly force, the party took up defensive positions and braced for the oncoming attack. An attack that never came because just as tomorrow was about to reach the island, Rek Mara cast hold ship, halting the vessel's progress and leaving it vulnerable to Lasnus's orbital cannon. The cannon punched a hole in the side of the phantom ship, allowing Cole to pilot a defense drone inside where the pirate ship was crawling with undead, which began dropping toward the beach. Only a handful managed to escape the ship, however, as Lasnus lined up her next shot and with a beam of divine radiance, cleaved the phantom ship in two. After they dispatched any undead who broke the surface, the party, along with an Avia Ra priestess named Salika Hathor, whom nobody seems to remember, <laughs> least of all Rek Mara, they made their way down to examine the wreckage. There, in what remained of the phantom ship, they found Sirgal Tamara waiting for them, laser sword in hand, his lower body wreathed in tentacles of living shadow. Salika unleashed a guiding bolt at the undead pirate, but the undulating darkness caused her spell to go wide. Before Sirgal could retaliate, however, the water around him began to swirl with druidic energy, pulling the pirate into a maelstrom from which he could not escape. Lasnus was momentarily caught in a cloud of necrotic ink, but Fritz helped her clear her visor and take aim with an eldritch blast, courtesy of the extraplanar consciousness named Nomad, which inhabits her newly acquired Gamma Pendant, while Narita conjured lightning bolts to pierce the darkness and corruption. As the party unleashed their continued attacks, the tentacles released their hold on Sirgal, retreating to the void and leaving their one-time prince to drown in the vortex. Then... Just to be sure that he would never rise again, the party added Zergal's corpse to the pyre of undead bodies on the beach. And that's where we pick up today. If I may take Welcome just back. a... <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. If I may take just a moment, I also just want to... Um, uh, uh, allow for the uh, for the we, we have been uh, we have been rejoined by men, uh, so I just want to uh, throw throw things over here for a second, say hi, and see how you're doing. Hello, ma'am. Hi. I'm <laughs> muted. Hello. <laughs> Tell us who hi, you everyone. Are playing. <laughs> I'm Ben. <laughs> I'm a hot mess. Um, I will be Narita Galeen, the Natalid witch, and she might be Rakmara style chaotic today. We'll not, we don't know yet. We'll find out. And we both use she, her pronouns. Okay, so we're, uh, we're uh, are we still on the, the island at this point? Are we figuring out what's happening? What's happening? What are we doing? What do we want? <laughs> if you want to still be island on the island and wrap things up there, that is fine with me. <laughs> we do. Yes. Yeah. Lastness is roasting marshmallows oh. on the pyre. So, I know we were trying to figure out, and this is this is also a thing. They, they, they were like, there was a possibility, and and unfortunately, a lot of this has gone further into the past than my brain currently wishes to hold on to. Apparently. Um, so I've got vague shapes that I'm trying to grasp at. Um, okay. And uh, one of them, inv I know there was some sort of impetus that, uh, that, that is very vague now uh, that has to do with um, that we, we had one impetus that involved Chiron and one impetus that involved there's something going on that we're investigating with the, uh, 
the possibility of an invasion at the center of the galaxy. And uh, I cannot at present recall what leads we were actually following at this point. Okay. So, um, the, uh, the undead pirate nation known as the Void Princes were amassing their undead army to attempt to uh, attack the Solar Citadel and perhaps um, unleash whatever dark power uh, allegedly uh, sleeps within the heart of the Sepulchre Star. That nation uh, was once and uh, theoretically still led by Sir Gold Hamero, whom you have recently defeated. So, whether those plans will continue without him is unclear. And uh, as for Chiron, you already know some of what's there. Brainworms. So many brainworms. I felt like there was some sort of weird connection where there was like a bunch of thing, psychic things or something related to going on. And it was like, well, it would probably bear it. And, and there, there's something that we may have to deal with. On, we may have to deal with the thing on Chiron in order yeah. to figure it out. Yeah, can't, because you know. um, after uh, following the trail of a bunch of um, pilots who had taken an experimental astrogation drug and ended up going way off course out uh, into the galactic frontier where you found the wreck of the uh, Emperor of the Way uh, and Vect pilot uh, Trimaxian and their uh, Rothian partner uh, who had defected from the Roth nation. Uh, you also discovered that um, those pilots all had something in common in addition to having taken the experimental drug and that was that they were all infected with a uh, a virus that affected their brain and left them all um, susceptible to um, communications of creatures like the the Roth and the uh, Illithid. And uh, that Mem was yes, infected with. Narita was also infected, which is why she had been uh, experiencing uh, various strange visions and hearing voices. And um, some of you began to strongly suspect that perhaps it was connected to the uh, psi worms and such on Chiron, just because of the whole telepathic and the psionic field around the planet that makes it difficult to scan with magic tech. So cool. there's, there's still something down there. Okay. So I guess we just need to decide, um, sort of which arm of things we're we're dealing with here. It sounds to. I think okay. All right. Maybe maybe we should actually just talk about this. There we go. <laughs> there's an idea. So we do we have a, have a are we in a position we can have like a chat about what we have going on or is there a, what are what are we doing right now? I understand there's marshmallow roasting going on. Yes, 
I've made some for everyone. Um, I don't want your corpse marshmallows. <laughs> you sound just like my grandmother. We're burning the bodies. They forgot that's the source of the fire. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yeah, I never forget that smell. I mean, uh, the the acrid smell of um, <clears throat> burning, rotted flesh. Yep, that's the one. I talked to one of those bodies. All right. I talked to them. And I'm mostly just using the heat, not really putting it over the fire, because that's, you know, against the Star Scout code anyway. Do you know where the fire came from, though? It's the heat, not the fire itself. But do you know where the fire came from, though? It's heat! The heat came from the fire, which came from the corpses. So you don't want any, is that what I'm getting? Yes. Well, no, because, you know, you know what this fire also produces? Ashes. Heat! It also produces ashes. Ashes, you know those ashes came burning, from? rotted flesh. That is wafting into the air and coating itself on your molten fee. Did, did you know you're a cannibal now? That's not my species. You, do, just, do you, are you sure there's not a dwarf in there? Are you sure there's not a dwarf in there? I mean, there's an awful lot of them. I don't know. <laughs> So let me get this straight. Um, you you are in fact a a knight, a paladin, who is eating s'mores. Well, now I'm sprinkled not sprinkled with the ashes of the undead. Well, now I don't want it. You should have never wanted it. We've seen the undead rise. What if These they rise were... within you? You're in trouble. I don't think that's how it works for paladins, but okay. We have a pretty you good know. health plan. <laughs> Not when your PCP is Rec Mara. <laughs> well, well, you see, no. The, the thing is, is that uh, I'm not within their network. Um, they consider my uh, they consider my medicine to be uh, unholy magic. How unholy? You're muted. Totally out of network, unholy, and probably muted. Maybe I just was too short when I said it. Sorry. Sometimes my mic doesn't pick up. I was just asking how holy. Oh, or unholy. Know. Yeah. Well, your your plan will not cover my expenses. You know, you always say that, but I've never seen you actually look at my plan. Sometimes I just think you say that just so you don't have to service people. There is also that. <laughs> You haven't even looked once at my HMO. I just don't want to have anything to do with your uh, medical network. I'm in the donut. Anywho. So, so um, did the, where is the wreckage of the ship? Is it no, um, destroyed and scattered on the beach? Is it uh, uh, under, most... is it submerged? It's mostly submerged off the shoreline underwater. So does that mean we actually have to dive to get to it? Or are we wading into it? I mean, you you did dive down to, to fight uh, Sirgal. Yeah. Did we finish salvaging oh, that's right. after that? Or uh, or it did, uh, <laughs> did we just sort of pop back up for air and start roasting marshmallows? <laughs> um, you, I think you did do a, a bit of uh salvaging there's a lot of uh scrap that could be dredged up um but nothing super interesting 
Um, has anything of interest washed ashore in between the destruction, the fight, and our uh, roasting? Um, I put away the space hot dogs. Um, not, not really. It, um, seems like, uh, most of the stuff that the pirates were hoping to acquire when they came here was, uh, locked in the vault slash panic room, and you, you got it first. What did they need here? What was it they were trying to get? Oh, you know, a collection of legendary artifacts that the uh, former chief science officer uh, had acquired via, um, I don't know, space eBay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There was the... <laughs> because they had this, this room full of crates that had, the, like, like, among other things, this legendary, this legendary gun in it. So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> legendary gun, and there's a, that legendary gamma pendant, pendant, there's that legendary data pad full of um, encyclopedic knowledge. Uh, there's also um, that puzzle cube that Rick Mara has recently acquired. Yeah. We've just been randomly looting all this stuff without actually thinking about it. We take and we take and we take and we don't think we just take. <laughs> I mean, fair. <laughs> it's the five E way. <laughs> fair. <laughs> that too is. Oh, look at oh Rick. Look at Rick Murat's outfit. We just take and we don't think. <laughs> Tragic. Are you still wearing the old timey diving helmet with your? <laughs> yes. But, uh, you know, the, the faceplate thing is open, so. <laughs> oh, my God. That doesn't yeah, help. <laughs> we are out for the bird guy really, really quickly here. Oh, my God. <clears throat> so, I guess we should figure out if we, uh, so we, we're going to need to let somebody know that Sergal's been taken out, um, which. Why? Uh, I think he has a bounty on his head still. Well, there's that. Um, and uh, also, you know, if in case, because then that means that the, uh, the, the, the pirate nation is going to be kind of scrambling around. I don't know if they've got a backup plan or not, but um, I mean, my understanding so suggest- of, of such things is you take out the leader, then it takes them a while to regroup. Yeah, well, I would suggest it's not a bad idea to see if we can collect the bounty, but I wouldn't go around proclaiming that we've taken out Sergal because if there is indeed an entire additional army of Void Princes running around out there, we've just created a target on ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't want to, we don't although, want to go announcing it in, in banners or anything like that. Exactly. So collecting a bounty is one thing, but collecting a bounty and then maybe, you know, going to a planet full of brain worms to hide for a while might not be a bad idea. Yeah, that's the thought. We do it. We we will have a little time then before they do whatever it is they're doing. How are we feeling on the uh, on the Chiron situation? I just say, looking around the group. I need more time to attune to this uh, puzzle and unlock its power. Brain worms. Lo- brain worms. Brain worms. Lander, brain how, worms. How can you fly? <laughs> I don't quite understand what's your fascination with brain worms. They're, they've easily been the most uh, dangerous thing that we've had to uh, manage. Yeah, kind Personally, of I think you're the most dangerous thing that we have to manage, and I'm all for the challenge of brain worms. Frankly, I think we all take turns being the most dangerous thing we have to manage, but let's not get into that. Um, okay, I, so how, I mean, how long sure, is it going to take to... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sure. I mean, just ignore the uh, the space scout here with the orbital cannon. I fail to see what I did wrong. We took him down, didn't we? I did have to cling to corpses to escape you, so there is that. <laughs> I was mostly not aiming at you. 
the mostly part is the problem. Well, it, it works a lot like hand shoes and horse grenades. Close. Let it go. Let it go. Never mind. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they play that, that, that version, that variant somewhere. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> so about how long is it going to take to attune? That's a very good question. One for the that's one for the dia. <laughs> well, um, you're. Uh, I would say you're probably already attuned to it, but if you want to um, figure out how to unlock um, one of the layers of the puzzle, um, according to um, Cut out. Oh, I think we lost, lost you. sound again. You're back, but you're muted now. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the downside of Google Meet, but still. Sorry. <laughs> Technology. Okay. Um, out out of character, uh, according to the stats in the book, it, it will take you about 10 hours, I believe, to solve one of the puzzles in the cube. Uh, in character, um, Zalika had it in her possession for at least 24, so she might be able to help you out. That's going to be a negatory. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> She's just giving you side eye. Uh, I mean, I figured that we're probably going to need to uh, assemble a crew in order to um, successfully invade a planet of brain worms. Yeah. Just and a thought. You know, we're going to need to at least coordinate with the... Uh... Whoa! <laughs> hey, hey, Vaglon! Thank you for thank you for so thank you for the sub. Um, yeah, we're at least gonna need to, uh, to coordinate with the uh, at least coordinate with that uh, the Nautilids uh, on uh, on what's you know figure out what they've been doing there and uh, just sort of see what we're looking at. Um, yes. Figure out what we need. They might still be at Saltma. Uh, so we could, uh, so we could just, I'm thinking maybe we could just sort of head back there for a little bit and, you know, give Rekmara a little time to, to look at the cube and then, you know, see if the Nautilids are still there, we can, we can talk to them about the possibility of getting the, getting something started on Chiron. Does that sound good? Brain, worms, brain, worms, brain, worms. Works for Fritz. Okay. And he just sort of turns around. He's sort of looking. He's looking back up at the uh, at the keep, and he's and he's looking just sort of around at, at the various equipment that we've that, that, that we're wearing that we picked up. And he's like, I wonder if they're going to need any of this stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was just lying around, right? I don't. I don't think they're. It was just sort of was like in boxes and stuff. They weren't like using it or anything, were they? <laughs> no, but uh, I imagine that we can consider the uh, our. Um... Obtaining of equipment to be our surcharge for you know, protecting their lives. That sounds good to me. Well, if you're going back to Chiron, which I don't know why you would, Zalika reaches up and unclasps a pendant from around her neck and offers it to the group. Mm -hmm. 
You should it's probably take this. Not that I care. But try not to die. This sentiment feels very familiar to me. And Narita just like looks at Rekmara. Sorry, sentiment, what? Narita takes the necklace. <laughs> Narita, you, uh, you have in your possession an Ankh of Ra. And if you wear it and attune to it, basically, if you uh, if you get killed or drop to zero hit points in, in the future, uh, you get a one-time get-out-of-death-free card. You will bounce back with all your hit points. And then uh, the pendant will uh, lose its magical properties. Don't you wish you had an unk like me? <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, mean, I, I, I feel like you're going to need it more than I will. So. Because you won't bring me back. So yeah, I do need it more than you do. <laughs> I mean, I theoretically could. I just don't know if you're going to like your new form. It's, it's random. It's kind of how reincarnation works. I'm just going to just shake my head, look back over at uh, <coughs> Zalika. Uh, so you are, are you, you folks staying here? Do any of you need a ride or anything? I think we're going to be heading to Saltmaw for a bit. Uh No, I think, I think we'll stay here. I, um, I'm not quite ready to go back to the Citadel. Uh, but when you finish your business on Chiron, if you make it out there, and you're curious about what's inside the star, look me up. Lassness leans over to Fritz and whispers, does she mean me? Fritz leans back over and is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Yes, you. I'm sure if you work your way up the, the chain of command long enough, you'll find out. But it might be important to know in case the Void Princes try to make a comeback. That would be good to know. Their their comms and stuff are still working here and all that, right? They're uh, they're they have like I don't know if they've got a communications array or just yeah, like a, they do. Antenna. They have an ether radio. <laughs> okay. Um, so they have one of the best comms in the galaxy. Um, Okay. And it seemed like um, Aharona had gotten a, a good uh, jump on getting it back up and running. So. Okay, cool. So we can ping them if we need to. That's that's good. Okay. Cool.
Well, I suppose we're done here. <laughs> just very... Cole is now just sort of sort of with a sort of a morbid fascination watching what happens to the marshmallows. <laughs> I threw them onto the pyre. Oh, they're burning and, good now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the stick I roasted them on. So much bubbling blackened sugar and stuff. Ew. Stuff is people's. <laughs> so we're heading back to um, the station, the Moss station. So can I reset my stuff, uh, like my hit points and the charges that I used, um, just to say that I'm not like messing with it. Um, daily, this uh, it regains 4d6 plus 10. So I figure I only did four. So any roll I do will be enough to recharge it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to reset all that stuff. Thank you. All right. That's a beaten. So you load all your treasures onto the shuttle, make your way back to Unum in orbit. Um, and cool. You have a message from Lee. Oh, okay. I will. Uh, I, I will. I will take said message. Um, in in the quarters, just in in case. Because it, I what? Wait, wait, wait in the quarters. Wait in the quarters, Cole. Hmm. Hmm. That's yeah, good. Be could be personal. <laughs> I'm just going to go and uh, just going to go and go to my quarters and and and, and play the message. Um, she's, she's basically just letting you know that she got your message from earlier and she saw the void beacon and she was trying to, uh, get a crew together in case you needed backup. Uh, that's very kind of her. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, then I will, I will, I, I will send another message. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. We're uh, we are uh, reconnoitering back at uh, we're done here. We're reconnoitering back at Saltmaw, um, and probably will be heading to Chiron after. And so I will send I will send unto her that message. Um, okay. So that she has that information. <laughs> and in the meantime, while we're well. After you know, once we're underway, I will start checking various, various feeds and areas. I will not, I, I will not announce, I, I will not say anything on these feeds and areas. But I'm going to go and try to check to see if I can find out if uh, uh, there's uh, who, who who we would turn it. Presu I'm presuming we, we 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 have brought some some item of uh, whether that be the body or whether that be. Some identifying thing from uh, Sergal. Um, to, I think we to, had a laser sword. Yeah. Well, we do have that. We need something that we can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So something we can turn or sh uh, show or turn in. Uh, I get yeah, the laser sword will probably do that. We can at least show um, to uh, let folks know that. Yeah, to, to, not to let folks know, but to 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 try to collect a bounty from somewhere. I also took yes. a couple selfies. Uh, yeah, there were some uh, 
macabre selfies. Uh, that's fair. Well, that's right. I did take a selfie wrapped up in the arms of Dead Circle. I forgot. <laughs> I, I, my favorite one was the one when you did the oh, look. Do selfies do in this day and age, or do, or do we still have to like haul the corpse back to get? Something I mean, like this? this selfies will probably do. <laughs> and the sword, the laser sword's pretty nifty. Yeah, I mean, if that's uh, if that's like his signature laser sword, then that probably would be. Sufficient proof, along with the selfies, to uh... and the drone video footage of the burning of his body on the yeah, beach. I mean, just the, we didn't want yeah. to haul it around. Mm -hmm. We got the drone video footage. We've got all manner of evidence that this Are has we... happened. The most the most important question is how have we gone space viral though. Have you gone space we must viral? Must not go space viral. I think that was like the no? thing, that was Fritz's point. Let <laughs> 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 us not tell anyone. But you know what, Lasnus and Narita didn't listen, okay? And these pictures are out there on hologram. Yes. So You're, and, oh dear. and so they are the ones who are gonna be targeted. So we'll we'll put it this way. You're not quite as 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 famous as um as Laguna Matata, but um Oceanus is very excited. Oh, no. <laughs> Oceanus is one of Narita's three hologram friends. <laughs> as as far as Oceanus is concerned, you you are more famous. You're the most famous. Also, Oceanus is trying to join a boy band. Um, and while you were gone, um, there were shenanigans on, on Salt Mall. Um, and both Gell and Primewater, well, Gell and Primewater has been, uh, incarcerated and um, Scarin Wave Chaser, the former butler to the Solmore family, um, Anders Solmore being the youngest member of the Planetary Council, is deceased. And uh, basically, uh, Lee can fill you in on the events of the Fate of Salt Maw series. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who would like to go check that out, please go to Origami Shuriken's channel and check out the VODs. <laughs> so there's all that that Cole will find on the feeds. <laughs> I still need to actually watch some of those. But, uh, yeah. uh, so if you're like, oh, crap. I'm just going to send another text, another another text over to Lee and say, you've been busy. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> so, um, yes. You, you can all get a long rest. I imagine some of you <laughs> need to recover from the events of the last episode or two. <laughs> um, and assuming no one is just crashing in, in all in the same room, you will all get a long rest. If anybody tries to rest in the same room as Rekmara, you will have insomnia. 
I rest as far away from Wreck Mara as I possibly can. I thought you were going to say something nice, and I was going to be like, I'm about to spoon the hell out of this bird man. No. But no. Rick no, may have insomnia for reasons of his own because he's trying to solve this p- puzzle. But it, anytime you are around him, like when you try to take a rest, um, there's just kind of an aura of like obsessive insomniac, just, I don't know, just kind of restlessness. Rick Mara, if you do t- try to take a long rest, you'll be fine. But nobody else can sleep in the same room as you. That's a good thing I don't like anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely not the move. Yes. It, it, to, to Rick Mara, this is not a downside. <laughs> yeah. Sacrifices must be made. Not my sacrifices. No, no. (laughs) Never yours. But but just, you know, for those of you who who were curious about why it was so hard to um, cure the individuals in the panic room of what ailed them and why Zalika, being a high priestess, could not cure them herself either... It was because she was attuned to that artifact and they couldn't get a long rest around her. I'm starting to worry about this puzzle box. <laughs> I don't think there's anything to be worried about. You're not dreaming of a man with like nails studded in his head, are you? Is she legit asking this while he's taking a break in, like, the uh, commissary or something? Probably. Over Spacos. Yeah. He's just going to stare at her for a moment and pick up his food and walk back to his room. (laughs) You know, if you need someone to take you to a haberdashery, you can definitely call on any of us. Because your outfit needs help. (laughs) <laughs> and we help the helpless. I, I mean, he's wearing normal clothes now, like his <laughs> robes. He's not wearing his, uh, I'm going to go dive underwater now. Um, <laughs> you were wearing that before you were going to go dive underwater. We don't know what's up. <laughs> Dang, I almost got him. Maybe if I write him a long, thoughtful, heartfelt letter. And she mutters to herself as she eats her spaceos. Okay. Fritz happens to open over here that little muttering and just whispers back. He might appreciate a singing telegram, actually. <sighs> That's a great idea. Okay. All right. One, two, step ball change. One, two, step ball change. <laughs> Uh, is there a, is there any uh, indication as far as um, if any as far as any research I'm able to do is to figure out kind of who we should talk to about collecting a bounty on uh, on this? Do, do, would we? Would well, we, would there be somebody on Saltma, or do we see. divert? <laughs> it, it probably on Saltma you would want to talk to Lesnus's boss. Oh, then, he's really nice. Um, either, so either to 5-0 or, um, or to Eliander Fireborn since he's on the uh, planetary security And uh, ex-military, but that depends if you want to deal with the garrison. Ah, 
Yes, that's that that's that's rather a that's rather a thing, isn't it? So um, I would say talk to the uh yeah. to the representative of the Sepulchre Knights. Yes, I think I, I yeah, I, I think I think Cole would prefer to talk to the representative of the Sepulchre Knights. It's not you know uh for for this at least. Um just well for okay, for anything really, when it's between them and Eleander El Fireborn. Um <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's still, there's still always like a question of like, uh, it's, I think, I think in Cole's estimation, it's not that much better, but it's, it's still better. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, being that uh, Sergal Tamaro is a bit of a cold case, it might take some time to look up that information. <laughs> How many hundreds of years? <laughs> oh, only ten. <laughs> only ten years. Okay. Just just a decade. But they changed over their formatting in, at least three times in the last decade. So, you know, we've got to go through various different ways. There's a lot to deal with there. Yes. Yeah, lots of unpacking of data. Um, but I will get back to you with the number. <laughs> and, um, uh oh. Uh, oh. Oops. Rec, Rec Mara, you do eventually manage to solve a layer of this Rubik's Cube. <laughs> oh, good. And, um, you realize that as you as you click those pieces into place, um, you are now able to use the codex to open a slip gate. Um, it has four charges and regains one charge daily. As an action, you can expend one of its charges to open a 10-foot diameter portal between two precise points in the multiverse that you choose. These two locations can be anywhere in the verse, including on different planes of existence. They must be known to you, or you can specify a general location, such as a particular maw, or a particular plane, or a set of coordinates. It it lasts for up to a minute, and then you can dismiss it as an action. It has a front and back at each location where it appears. You can travel only by moving through its front. Anything that does so is instantly transported to the other location, appearing in the unoccupied space nearest to the portal. All right. What's the next puzzle? There are many. Oh, well, everybody else is doing stuff. I will work on yes. the next puzzle. Okay. Well, you can spend another 10 hours to unlock another puzzle. <laughs> I'm well spent. To, are you going to sleep in between? Do, does Probably. Rick Moran need to sleep at this point? <laughs> I don't know. Does he? Does he? I don't know. Just let us know if you start seeing strange doors or windows in place. Do not do not go through them. That's all I'm going to say. Well, if you if you forego taking a rest, you may incur levels of exhaustion unless you have a druid of feature that allows you to go without sleep. But you know, I don't believe that is the case. But yeah, um, any of those uh, abilities on the list for Un's Codex um, could be unlocked, potentially. All right. Well, while everybody else is doing their preparation, I'll continue doing mine. OK. So, what is everybody else up to?
Uh, hang on. I think, uh, sorry, I've got a tech thingy I'm looking at real quick. Okay. Uh, okay, no, it's good. Yeah. Incoming! Fritz is probably just spending some quality time with the data pad and understanding what's going on with that. Okay. So yeah. the Encyclopedia Multiplanaria. Uh, it has one button. And if you press the button, the, the data pad will call up an entry that it thinks will be helpful to you. Um, you could, you could attempt to index it again. Uh, you might have to figure out how to expand its, its memory banks a bit because, uh, whoever created it just crammed as much as they could and didn't organize it at all. Muted. I slid that over. Um, let's get some help from Unum on this okay. and work on a co-indexing project, not to take up all of Unum's time, obviously, but three heads are better than one on this one. Yes. And uh, Unum can multitask. <laughs> yes. No, it's it will it will be a process, but Unum can definitely uh, speed it up a bit. Is there anything particular particular that you're looking for? Or are you just going through and starting to organize? So mostly organization, but anything related to Chiron, brain worms, psychic phenomenon, or anything related to the uh, infection virus that uh, we know had previously infected folks. Those are the kinds of things that we might run into in the immediate future that might be helpful. Okay. Pull those off into a separate set of files uh, to review. Oh, and Fritz will probably also put in some restocking orders um, at Salt Ma, okay. and also just probably do the usual listening in in terms of catching up with what's happened at the station, et cetera. So. All right. So do we want to take a quick break while everybody is going and doing all the prep stuff, and then we'll regroup and figure out when you or if you're ready to head to Chiron after. Sounds good. Sure. All right. All right, cool. We will, uh, we're going to head to break. I've got uh, an interview I'm throwing on here uh, whilst we're doing that. And uh, we will be back in a little bit. See you shortly. Welcome to the break. Um, today I have Dot with me uh, to uh, talk about all manner of things. Hey, how's it going? It's it's going pretty good. Uh, how's it going with you? Are you surviving uh, your quarantine? Oh, I am. It's it's delightful. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is your mental state still in place? Your yes, mental state? It's, my mental state is basically where it was before, only more so. I think that's pretty much all I can really say about it. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, this is, this is where we're recording this during the time of quarantine. Um, and uh, but uh, uh, 
rather than focusing on the present, actually, at the moment, I would like to ask you a little bit about the past oh. and uh, find mm. out uh, kind of whence you come. You have uh, been <laughs> streaming for a bit and uh, gaming oh, for a bit. Yeah. How did you get into all of this madness? Yeah, OK, so I think I was I was I was trying to tally up the other day, actually, because somebody asked me a very similar question. And I think it's around three years now that I've been streaming proper. Um, in full transparency, my personal Twitch channel did not start out as an RPG channel. It was a cosplay channel, uh, but also a story for another day. Um, but really, I think uh, what happened was, in layman terms, I moved to Atlanta after wanting to become an actor and was not able to pay the bills doing that uh, here in the city. And so I went back to grad school and I got a, uh, my master's degree in like uh, creative entrepreneurship and creative business. And so I spent all this time in and out of museums and theaters and I was working like a dog and nothing was really working out for me. And uh, at the time I was playing on other people's channels but I wasn't really like owning my stuff. And what I ended up finding was I enjoyed the process of collaborative storytelling on Twitch RPGs a lot more than producing live theater, um, than producing, uh, you know, art shows and gallery shows like I really found a niche in the process of merging gaming something that I already loved from way back dot right um from wee little dot uh to to where I I realized that why I went to school to be an actor was not because I wanted to be famous or because I thought I was an incredible actor I like to tell stories with people, other people. Um, and so now I'm lucky enough that my day job, I work at an improv company, um, doing marketing for an improv, yeah, you know, an improv group. And uh, by night, I get to do this thing with all these incredible people like you. Uh, and we, we tell stories and, you know, it's funny, you look at it from the outside and it seems so quaint, uh, but I think it's, it's, it's more important now than ever before with the use of technology if we don't use it as a platform for storytelling then it will overtake the form of storytelling yeah from us as you know from from us as humans and so we have to like use it to reach yeah. people versus yeah so anyways i'm pretty obsessed with it and so that's the long and short of how kind of how i got here i just i started over on encounter role play and then kind of branched out from there and started producing my own stuff. I really wanted to stop playing Dungeons and Dragons, not because I don't like the system, let's be real. That's how I got started. And I played it for years, years, 12 years, in fact, before I ever got to um, another RPG. But I found that the stories I wanted to tell were a little obscure and a little different, mm -hmm. which I'm sure we're going to learn about before all this is all this conversations over with. But yeah, and so uh, that's kind of how I got here. And I found a group of friends, a real tribe of people that totally talk a different language and uh, look at the world differently. And it's kind of a beautiful thing. And I, I feel kind of lucky actually to get to do it with, with everybody and all of you. That is awesome. And uh, there, there are so many things in there I kind of want to ask about, but um, the uh, mm. uh, among them, um, the, just the idea of um, just basically taking that. I, I do like very much that, that idea of, of um, not, Try, trying not to let the, 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 the platform direct you, but you direct the platform. Um, that, because that is important because a lot of times people are just going to leap into a thing thinking, I've got to get on Twitch. Um, right. And they don't know what they're going to do <laughs> necessarily. It's true. Uh, yeah. And so it's, it's, it's nice to actually be like, okay, let us use this for good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, find a, I, I, um, so this company, this theater company that I'm working for, I've recently launched a Twitch channel for them, um, which has been its own grand endeavor over the last like six or seven weeks as we've uh, barreled through what is sketch comedy on Twitch. So it's, it's interesting because I think the platform is so versatile. And if we look at history, the greatest creative movements come out of the biggest times of despair. World War II, we start getting... Dadaism and expressionism and these these much larger movements of of thinking and thought and stuff being created and now we have technology as a platform to add to that and here we are in a <laughs> literal quarantine where we can still share that creative process and I think that there's just something kind of uniquely 
beautiful about that um and kind of raw at its core so i don't know i'm all about it i say Actually, it's funny. I ran a I ran an online webinar to teach individual artists how to like launch a stream onto Twitch, use OBS, the basics. Yeah. And, um, and I told him I was like, it's better to just do it. Like I remember my first Twitch channel. I had no idea what I was doing. It is two weeks of me sanding a 3D printed Darth Vader helmet. It came in 60 pieces. I put that sucker together live on Twitch. And by the end of the two weeks leading up to Dragon Con, I was a I was a hot mess of a person. And I, but I did it. I did it. It's out there. One of the very first clips of me is actually slotting on this Vader helmet and dancing. So you can go out there and find it. It's out there somewhere. But, you know, I think the origin is important, but it's not as important as the doing, right? Process of yeah. a product. And uh, not everybody agrees with that. And I think that's cool. But I just love the idea that we have the capability to wield technology to do things that we've never been able to do before. Like I would never be able to play with half the people if I expected it had to be done IRL or if yeah. it had to be done at only conventions. And so we're at this incredible time uh, where we can share things that we couldn't share before. And so it's an opportunity found in mass chaos uh, that I think just can't, can't be ignored. So I'm a huge cheerleader for it. And that, that is awesome. Um, uh, and, uh, I yeah honestly I totally agree I think this is this is this is definitely the time uh, to be uh, trying to reach out with this platform and telling these stories. Um, I also I very much resonate with the idea that um, as 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 someone who who also with a theatrical background yep. as a storyteller <laughs> myself I very much uh, I, I I like very much how this sort of synthesizes all of the things that I like and puts them together all the things I like to do and actually focuses it. <laughs> Yep. In a uh, in a way that hopefully, hopefully is something meaningful for folks. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh, sure. I think it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, but uh, for the time being, if folks would like to check out your media and things you're doing, where should they go? You can find me online as Little Red Dot. Uh, usually it's uh, at little underscore red underscore dot. Uh, that'll be my Twitch channel as well as Twitter where I'm most active. And um, if you hang around on my Twitch channel, I'll usually drop a Discord link and you can come join the Dotlot community and hang out. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and throw things back over to me. Uh, and uh, what a future me, whatever future me is doing right now. Um, oh, no, future you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Some show or other is <laughs> happening right up. now. Yes. Whatever it is. <laughs> whatever is happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> sooner or later, I've, I've been saying that a while. Sooner or later, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to send myself a warning from one of these, uh, from one from from the future. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, today could be that day. Everyone. It could be today. I don't know. I might be getting a message even now, but we'll see. No, uh, I, I do not. I do not have Just anywhere. In. Yeah, I do not have anywhere near the wherewithal to be able to to be able to plan something like that. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to throw things back to whatever show it is that I'm doing right now is that, uh, that you folks are watching. Thank you all so much for, uh, for watching and continuing to watch. And uh, we will see you in a bit.
we we have returned to it, and uh, and uh, we are we are somewhere we are somewhere in space, as far as I'm aware. Not, not to get not to get too specific, but <laughs> no. Are we uh, are we back at Salt Maw at this point? You are back are at Salt Maw. Okay. Right. You have all rested, done some research, and. Now you're ready to coordinate with all the interested parties about the return to Chiron. Yeah. So we, we had a few different folks we needed to alert on that front. Um, yes. You've already arranged for Lee to meet you there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool, cool. And Lee actually has assembled a crew of some kind, right? Is that? Yes. Uh, she has, she has hired the, uh, Hammer Detective Agency ship to, uh, transport her and some of her, uh, fellow Oni to Chiron. <laughs> okay. They were, they were ready to, they were ready to jump to Ionaria in case there was a big space battle, but you took care of that. <laughs> Yay! Awesome. The power of the power of whole ship uh, <laughs> and and orbital cannons. Um, cool. Okay, so I know we need to talk to the Nautilids. I know we need to talk to Doctor Wu. Um, I know we need to. As a side note, I know we. As a side note about the main plot, I know we need to talk to the uh, sepulchre representative. Um, and uh, was there someone? Else? And and so we've got. I think we've already kind. Of, I guess we've already taken care of what we need to with regards to you know talking to Lee. Do we need anything else? Do we, should we? Should we? Do we? Do we, do we want to make sure we've got other stuff? assembled for this. Should we should we uh talk to the Nautilus that uh, Oceanus was uh serving? Yeah, it's the same ship I think, the uh the Manon. Oh, okay. The Manon. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk to them. Oceanus uh, just wanders onto various ships and signs up with their crew. So there's lots of people you could talk to. <laughs> he's, he's over on he's over on the detective agency ship now, isn't he? <laughs> um, he was on the detective agency. He signed on with the Cerberus for a little while to go look for space mermaids. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Someone's going to have to tell him about the space mermaids sometime soon. That's that's going to. Do do we have to, or could we just? We don't have, have to. It? No, we can. We can. Uh... <laughs> I mean, you know, have to is a relative term here. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't feel a particular need per se, but no. uh, <laughs> I thought someone would. Um, okay, cool. I mean, and so, so, you know, what what uh, do we want to do? Um, we want to do like so i guess it's just at this point uh sepulchre Wu and the nautilids which is my third favorite um in in the retro band um <laughs> which which of those three do we want to move toward first I don't know that we all need to go to all three of them. Yeah. We could probably yeah. divide and conquer oh, this. Yeah. I will go, obviously, to the yeah. Nautiluts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, best friend, Rec Morale, you want to come to the Nautiluts? I mean, if I must. <laughs> Love your enthusiasm. It's great. It really makes me feel good every day. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. I'm thinking that 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Cole will probably want to talk to the Sepulchre and will probably want to bring Lasnus for that purpose. Okay. Fritz, do you and, want to talk uh, to Dr. Wu or do you want to? Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Fritz had downloaded a bunch of information from Dr. Wu initially, so that might not be a bad conversation to go back and connect back on anyway. So yeah. happy so to then, do that. Yeah, because I think Wu was wanting to come along or at least get get something. Be aware of, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Flag that and make sure Wu has all the equipment and whatnot. And yeah. Fritz can get Wu squared away on board ship too if, if they want to come along. Yay, plans! All right. Yay. Do I have to make you roll for initiative to see who goes first? No. <laughs> you tell us who goes first. <laughs> All right. Um, let's. Why don't we do Dr. Wu and then uh, the Sepulchre Knights and then Reb up with the Nautilid because that will put us closest to our goal of launching, jumping to Chiron next time. So, All right. Um, so you find Dr. Well, Wu in her office yep. uh, filing so much paperwork because of events that have transpired in your absence. And, and Fritz seeing mounds of paperwork being tangentially aware of the fact that they're related to recent events and understanding paperwork is the bane of Every bureaucrat will say, Dr. Wu, we learned a lot. We're getting ready to take off for Chiron. We understand you might be interested in making the trip with us. I would. It would be a nice change of pace. Um, I, I've just wrapped up so many autopsies. Autopsies. Yes. Uh, there was a poisoning and it turned out to be connected to a certain smuggling ring I'm sure you're familiar with. The same one? Yes, the very one. Uh, certain... Uh, high profile members of the council were implicated uh, and there was a uh, shootout uh, near the, the docking bay. So this would be a good time for a little uh, getaway, right? Change of pace. I think so. <laughs> Super. Happy to fill you in on more details as we go along, um, but there's definitely an infectious disease component to what's happening, as we know, um, and yeah, there's definitely stuff going on here. Um, do you need any help with the equipment or supplies? Can I help you move anything that you might want to bring over? I'm happy to make accommodation with you uh, on board Unum. Uh, certainly. I can uh, put together some supplies and have those ready to go. I would recommend uh, double and triple checking the integrity of everyone's life suits. Excellent thought. Um, that's a good point. I'll make sure to put in a couple of requisitions for spare p supply parts for some of the pieces that we may have. Uh, we've been doing a little bit of uh, wear and tear on those parts underwater and in some more unusual circumstances. So I'll make sure that those get a definite once over. Fritz will stop and sort of talk into their ear for a moment to make sure that that information gets relayed back. Um, and we'll uh, uh, take care of checking everyone's life suits and also um, make a mental note to check in on Narita's uh, aqua suit to make sure that that also fully functional too. All right. Okay. That check should, that off. That should do it. You're, you're from as by this point, as familiar with Chiron as Dr. Wu is, so. We're good to go. Meanwhile, 
at the uh, Sepulchre Knights headquarters. Lasnes and Cole in conversation with the actually effervescent Vect Paladin. <laughs> uh, quite bubbly as half of the time uh, they are speaking in uh, Aquan. <laughs> or the the um, the effervescent uh, also the effervescent tongue of the amoeboids which is yeah it literally sounds bubbly nice. did we uh, who had the uh, who had the the laser sword okay cool cool excellent good good So do you want to do the, well, if I've met this person, do you want to do the introductions? Sure. Not a problem. Hey, ho, hey, ho. I see you five. Oh, she salutes. <laughs> Good to see you again, Lazarus. How have you been? Keeping busy? Keeping out of trouble? <laughs> Can't do one without doing the other five. Oh, this is true. But I have some really amazing news. And she just goes, ba ba da ba, shing. And she holds it up and uh, with the fanfare that I just made. Um, and she presents the laser sword hilt first to Fibo. Oh my. Wow. That is quite a notorious artifact. And we beat it with the power of teamwork. Well, makes the dream work, don't you know? We were rather wondering about the uh, the uh, bounty on this, on the the holder of said thing. We have uh, footage, I believe. Oh yeah. yes, he was quite a wanted man back in the day. Yes, and um, who do we talk to about interest in accruals? Uh, that would probably be me. Great. <laughs> so let's get down to brass tacks before we start talking about Chiron, because that's going to be a crazy story. And she fills him in on the backstory, um, okay. omitting the it, it specific parts about the orbital space cannon. Nomad suggested it, maybe. Okay. So, um, Five O uh, begins some very enthusiastic uh, calculations and looking up old uh, files and records, and uh, you will all probably, at some point, when the paperwork goes through, find a, uh, a hefty sum <laughs> deposited <laughs> into your accounts. <laughs> We just need to survive Chiron long enough to, to uh, do something with it. Yeah. Do you uh, do you have any idea how long? Um, and I, he oh. doesn't even bother to introduce himself. He's just talking. Uh, I, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I did also introduce him in the middle of the salute. <laughs> I kind of yeah. forgot that part. I was oh, just so works. excited. Yeah. Um, Nora, yeah. it was funny. Oh my god. <laughs> Nora's opinion on this is very important. <laughs> um, no, so, so I can't remember now. Oh no, it's slipping away. Ah, crap! This is our best game yet. It was right Do you there. Have any idea how long back. what? Okay, I was okay. How long? How long? How long? How long? How much time? I'm sure that's probably a function of time. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. Good. It's, it's back. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, do you have any idea um, if that's, uh, I, I know that you've probably, I assume, been working about, uh, working on this whole thing, looking into the situation with the, uh, this, this pirate fleet, potentially, that we 
sent information on a while back. Do you have any idea if, if this, uh, if the fact that potentially their leader is taken out, if what the effect that's going to have, if that's going to, is this going to give us some breathing room, do you think? One would hope that it would. However, they have continued to operate over the past decade, uh, considering what you found on Asteroid Abbey. So, um, we are, however, the all of the sepulcher knights at various moss stations are on high alert. Um, the Luxe garrison has uh, has posted extra security here locally. I would hope that other stations have as well. Um, we've also been. Uh, dealing with negotiations with the uh, orcish borders. Uh, that seems to be going relatively smoothly now that they have a new leader who is, uh, uh, seems to be of a more diplomatic persuasion. Okay. That's good news then. All right, well, um, I know that uh, uh, we ourselves are about, this is sort of looking over lessons, we're about to head over, uh, we're gonna be on Chiron taking care of some things. I have no idea how long that's going to take, but if there is um, something you want, uh, might perhaps want to consider our services for in the future, intelligence gathering, things of that line, we might be, we might be interested in that. Um, so we can, we can certainly, uh, we can certainly talk about that if you wish. Certainly. Uh, well, just check in when you're back from Chiron and we'll discuss future matters and go from there. You know, uh, and yeah, Cole nods. He says, yeah, it's, I'm still, we still need to like figure out, we still need to figure out what the, what happens with the Chiron situation and then, you know, see where everybody is with the, you know, see, see where the crew is, but uh, on it. But uh, I think we'll probably be, it, we'll, we'll, we'll. We'll probably be ready. After all that, I, I imagine at least one or two of us will be ready to hit something else. Of course. I'm sure Lasness will keep me apprised one way or the other. Jeez. Oh, that reminds me. And then she talks about the superb owl and the people that they met and how lay on hands didn't exactly work on what was wrong with them. And that might be something important for the Order of the Sepulchre to know. Oh, was that the mm, mm, the void rot? They contract it from the, the the undead pirates. It's possible, but they told me they were vaccinated for that. Um, so I'm not exactly sure if it was that. I it might be space madness with a touch of space flu. Hmm. It sounds like a number of extenuating circumstances all coming together, and things get complicated but uh their insurance is good though it'll yes. it'll work it'll work with our within our network so so they'll be more willing to work with us i would think so you may want to look out for them i will uh, i will certainly check in is there anything else cole I think that's all I got. All right. So we cut to Narita and Rek Mara rendezvousing with Captain Azaline of the Manan. Narita just looks over at Rek Mara and is kind of like, 
pushes him forward. Go on. <laughs> Why do I have to take the lead on this? They're your people. We're all one and the same. I, I don't think so. We come from two entirely different climates. I'm the only one on the ship not wearing a preservation one suit. The, one and the same. But uh, they know you. And on the ship, just like Mara may be the only one wearing a suit because their ship is full of water. Yeah. Narita <laughs> swims away. <laughs> Maybe we should just let evolution take its course here. <laughs> She's going to go hang out with the babies in the nursery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Edia, who's in charge here? <laughs> Captain Azaline comes to meet you. So you're heading back to Chiron. I believe that is the uh, plan, in fact. We have been having uh, a little bit of trouble with um, the, the Maw Keeper over there. He seems to be quite fastidious about uh, filing paperwork. So... Good luck with that. I'm sure we'll manage. At any rate, uh, I've come to request your uh, support in the effort to uh, commit mass genocide of alien brainworms upon the planet. I hear they're not very popular and uh, the uh, planet would be in better hands other than... Uh, Parasites. I imagine so. Uh, it one would hope that once the uh, cyworm infestation has been exterminated, then it would be easier to conduct planetary scans and find out what exactly is going on with the chemical makeup of the water there. The Rita seemed to think it was promising. Yeah, funny that, as he looks around to clearly demonstrate that uh, she is so interested in and invested in this project that uh, she has um, decided to stay away from these uh, negotiations. Well, the world ship does have defensive capabilities if you need some extra guns. I, I believe those would, in fact, help. So are we in accord? I believe we are. All right. And Rekmara doesn't even bother to... Uh, oh, Rep Rekmara is going to say, um, our space dwarf will uh, be in touch with the coordination efforts. And then he's just going to turn and walk away. He's not even going to um, bother um, looking for... Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to bother lo looking for Narita. He's just going to leave. Okay. All right. So you have as much information as you can gather. You have uh, some backup arranged, and you are ready to jump to Chiron when we come back next week. Hopefully next week. <laughs> Just going to, at some point, I think, just on the way out, going to stop by the gift shop and pick up a copy of everything you wanted to know about Aboleths but was afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Along those lines. Okay. Anything. Anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. How do you deal with those? I don't know. 
should probably find out. Uh -huh. But that's what information networks are for. Um, well, cool. So are we? Uh, are we? Are, are are we at? Are we at an end? I think that's a wrap for now. <laughs> hey. All right. Cool. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching this very disorganized. Uh, this this very this very disorganized on my part. Very organized on Alyssa's part. Session uh, of uh, of this game where. Uh, we just allow our brains to bounce around in whatever direction they seem to they seem to want to go. Um, <laughs> happy short day, everyone. Um, also, happy pie day for those of you who celebrate circumference. Um, we are uh, we're gonna go ahead and go royal around. Titles. I'm sorry. You don't need to use royal titles. He prefers Mister over Sir. Mister Comfrance. Yes, Mister Comfrance. <laughs> Ms. That's conference. good to know. That's that's good to know. That's that's helpful. Um, you just can't wait till next just Sunday. <laughs> it took Anino a second there. Uh, okay, well, uh, that's uh, we're gonna go ahead and go around then. <laughs> oh God, quick, wrap it up. Uh, we're gonna go around then and, uh, and do our outros. Feel free to. Uh, uh, and any final, if you had any final thoughts about this session, favorite moments or whatever, feel free to uh, to 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 share all uh, and any and all that. Feel free to tell folks where they can find you, and uh, and uh, put any links you wish in the in the chat while we're doing that. Uh, in, in addition to what's going to pop up there, if you so desire, uh, we shall start as always uh, with our station master Alyssa. Hey everybody! Thanks for tuning in. And thank you all for playing. I am, I am excited to get back to Chiron, where you all swore you would never go again, <laughs> or at least Cole did once upon a time in the next like story. Said that. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow I managed was right. <laughs> to drag you back there not once, not twice, but this will be the third time. Will it be the last? We shall see. Uh, and find out what awaits you there and what is the cause of this cyworm infestation. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at Origami Shuriken, and you can find me on Saturday, the 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on what streams may come on the Chaotic Tiefling ATL channel. I have joined the cast of Love's Labor's Lost for a dramatic Shakespeare reading. <laughs> uh, this will be my first time dipping back into Shakespeare after about 20 years. <laughs> so <laughs> that should be fun. Hey, very That's cool next week for more of this believe it or not this session was less chaos than most of the episodes of <laughs> the one on my channel <laughs> we gotta step it up everyone i know right can't can't let the what is it called the sequel be better than the og <laughs> oceanus is showing you up <laughs> i gotta do I got to load up on the energy drinks or something. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then let us, uh, let us head let us head over to Mim. Hey. A Mim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm going to explain what happened. Everyone deserves to know what happened. Okay? So what had happened was I looked down. My stupid lights were the wrong color. I was like, oh, you have to change the color. It's wrong on your, on my computer thing. What is it called? My case. Man, I cannot do this. Um, so my case colors were wrong, and I decided to press buttons to get them right. But the other part of me was like, you don't actually know what the power button is on this computer. Maybe you shouldn't press buttons? But my brain was like, no, 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 just press the button. And I turned it off. Sorry. <laughs> uh. I'm uh, my favorite moment tonight. 
today today it's, it's not night somewhere yet. it's it's night somewhere but it's not night here i'm a hot mess i'm so sorry um my favorite moment was abandoning Rekmura. <laughs> Because I don't get to do that often, and it and it and it felt like the thing to do. That's what also I've done. <laughs> but also, I kind of forgot what I was supposed to be doing, so I was like, "All right, take the reins, buddy." <laughs> um, you can find me here on Sundays. <laughs> I'm doing a charity stream in a couple of weeks, and I'm kind of thinking maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> I can't derail someone else's stream this way. <laughs> That'd be great. They'll be like, this was supposed to be a cozy fun time. And I'll be like, I don't know what happened. I'm very sorry. Um, I love you all. Thank you. Sorry. Um, but I guess uh, I'll be better next week. This chaos. Absolutely. I did. I did. I'm s it's absolutely so fine. Absolutely fine. <laughs> No, believe me. I, and just the, the point where, where we popped off, we just we just we you know, we, we switched over late, and we continued. We were fine. Probably like, oh, what just happened to Mim? And it's just like, oh, something must have happened. It's like, no, I happened. <laughs> it was right. me. Yeah. It was all okay. me. We all have that. that. That's happened to me before. I've actually done a thing where I'm supposed to transition from one screen to another, and I've hit stop streaming instead, and so it just the whole thing. <laughs> Well, that's you're gone. like, yeah, you're just like, well, I guess we're wrapping early today. <laughs> I had my, I had at the very, at the very, uh, at the cli at the climax of a finale, when all the focus was on my character, and my character was confessing something, my power went out for a moment, <laughs> my computer went out, uh, my internet actually, more specifically, as it came back on, the internet was gone, and I, I had to, to call back in and finish on uh, on 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 my cell phone uh so it was i have yeah. seen far worse you made <laughs> I, it happen i have done far worse <laughs> you made it happen someone that happened to someone here didn't it not yeah my laptop died in the middle of the like last episode of bad streets right when uh yeah. right when Bo and clyde were having a very intense moment <laughs> And I had to run downstairs and borrow my roommate's laptop and log back in oh my God. to finish the episode. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, Kazimi, yeah, that Kazimi, you had like weird computer problems, and we had to do like a bunch of stuff to make make it work for you, right? Like you were something happened. I don't remember what exactly. We've we've had a few people like with tech issues. Once we had to finish an episode without someone because yeah. power went out. It. Yeah. The gremlins get everywhere. They really do. Yeah. The gremlins. We the gremlins provide. The gremlins even, are in my brain today. Yes, so even sorry, into, well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. They get everywhere. They get. <laughs> <laughs> they're in my. They're sure as hell in my brain today. Uh, but uh, but gremlins aside, we shall uh, we, we shall push on and uh, head over to May. Hi everybody. Um, my name's May. I have a Twitter. Nothing really exciting happens on my Twitter. It's there though. Um, I'm here on Sundays, maybe somewhere else someday soon, somewhere, somehow, with some people. Who knows? Or maybe nothing. Let's see what happens. I had fun every single moment of tonight, and I'm so grateful to know everyone and that I got to share Pi Day with some of my favorite people. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one I can do. Actually, no, I can't even do that. My hands are still yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, why are we doing Pi Day? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I have issues with there my right thumb. There you go. Slice of Pi Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, now yeah. let us head over to Kazimi. Hi. I'm Kazimi. I'm here on Sundays. Uh, I love everybody here and all of our moments on and off camera. I think some of my favorite moments today were off. Um, 
And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to my pie day pie, quiche pie coming up shortly. We've been discussing pies and quiche and now I'm hungry and that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> so, and uh, looking forward to that probably more than brainworms on Chiron, but we will see about next week and see what we get into. <laughs> so. Excellent. Excellent. And finally, Anino. How's it going, everyone? My name's Anino. You can find me on Twitter at Anino Gaming um, for more um, <laughs> of this incredibly <laughs> random role play. You can catch me next Friday night at uh, eight thirty Eastern Time on the Wandering DM channel for the next installment of Cyberpunk Red, um, and then again on the uh, very same channel at one PM Eastern Time on Saturdays for uh, Scion. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, I should probably start streaming on my channel again soon. Uh, there are a number of other games that are um, coming out that uh, I want to play um, if work allows me to. Uh, work. work. It's a dirty word. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Um, I don't even know. I don't have words for tonight. Game. <laughs> I really don't. I think I think it speaks for itself. <laughs> I it really does. It really does. Um, I think I'm going to say that uh, uh, my my favorite moments actually tonight. I I did very much enjoy the uh, uh, Narita and Rick Mara uh, at the end. Uh, just the, the, the old, here you you take care of this. <laughs> We're just piecing out. I also do want to call out, though, uh, uh, Alyssa's cleverly concealed costume prop uh, that uh, for <laughs> near the beginning was the, uh, the 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 uh, the the necklace. Just sort of, and I, I I just thought it was part of your costume, and uh, it was uh, mm -hmm. that you were wearing today. But it is actually it had a plot purpose, and that was awesome. And so I love that. Um, I, I love that Alyssa is so incredibly patient. <laughs> And, uh, and, and just, uh, we have no idea why. Yeah. This, really this, is, <laughs> this is her first, this, this is her first DM, uh, campaign on a stream. And, uh, I wouldn't blame her if she th made this her last. <laughs> what are you talking about? This has been full of magic and wonder and I it's mean... amazing. Assuming we ever finish this one. <laughs> Why do you think we've been dragging this so out for so long? She we can't let you leave. And then leave never here. <laughs> but uh, but no, I just uh, it's it's just and just the fact that you're willing to, to to put in all of these details, these little things, even just down to the costumes, and that that was that was wonderful, and I love it. Um, I, I, it's because I, I, I have no I life. <laughs> Thanks, COVID. We'll just say it's the COVID. It doesn't have to be anything else. We'll just say yeah. it's COVID. We all have that to blame. We have to um, but uh, that said, um, let us uh, let us know once uh, once again. Bow our heads and thanks to Jade Nebula for the, for providing the art. Um, once again, I'm Jim Ryan. Uh, you can find me at Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is jimyesthatjim.com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I have links down below to my various media. On this channel, on Tuesday nights, uh, we have I am running a campaign of Urban Shadows, uh, which is the, ta the name of the campaign is Lex Talionis, and it is set in present-day Rome, Italy, um, where we've... Uh, we, we, we have the uh, into the standard mix of uh, sort of vampires, werewolves, and fae. We also now have uh, Roman deities starting to show up, and so that's, uh, I think, going to be quite interesting as things progress. Um, on uh, Saturdays, I am over right now on Weave the Tale playing in their Fate of Cthulhu campaign, uh, run by Trooper, uh, who you've seen here as Oceanus. Um, and... Uh, is uh, the 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 campaign we are doing is the return of Carcosa, and uh, things are things are getting nuts. And uh, we're all now in our last episode. We're all playing like two or three different versions of ourselves uh, <laughs> because because there's time travel and it's messed up. 
Oh, good. It's the other dog special. It is, basically. <laughs> it's, I, can't, I can't avoid it now. I didn't even try. I didn't even try to set it up or anything. It just happened. There are three of me. Three! <laughs> and Trooper just immediately is just having us play all the different versions of ourselves. It's glorious. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so, so tune in for that if there's, if there's interest in that. Um, and, of course, uh, when we're all available, we have this. We, we have more of this on Sunday afternoons. And it is wonderful. Um, also, signups are currently open uh, for a short campaign of Scum and Villainy that Brian is going to come back and run, um, starting uh, hopefully sometime in April. Um, signups are open right now for about a little under the next two weeks. The uh, signups close on Friday, uh, the 26th of May. May, March. That's the, no the other month that starts with an M, Jim, an M A. Uh, March. This month is March. So uh, March, uh, Friday, March 26th is uh, when the signups close. Uh, so uh, please, uh, if, you, if you have any interest, feel free to sign up for that. Um, want, want, want to go doing some, uh, some, some, some various, ver various things in space uh, of, a, of, of, of an adventurous nature or possibly highest nature, depending on what kind of crew we have. We'll see. Um, and uh, so uh, if you want to do that, you can go to jimmyesthatjim.com and click on game sign up or go click down below here on Twitch on RPG sign up. As always, beginners are welcome. So when we hit the end card, uh, I'm going to uh, send a raid over to somebody. There are several people uh, currently doing stuff. Uh, I'm going to have a look um, at the, the various folks and see, I see Pinnacle is streaming right now. Um, I know some folks over there. Uh, I know, uh, let's see, Nymeria is streaming. Manapot Studios, Nuchtas. Uh, well, it'll be one of those probably. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. And uh, then uh, that will be once again when we hit the end card. So if anyone feels like hanging out and saying hi to them with us, feel free to come along. Um, in the meantime, folks, thank you all very much for watching. Take care. And we will catch you next time. Farewell.